All right, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this new Wi-Fi 360 primer interview. It's my pleasure to welcome Mark Reynolds, who is IT Director for the University of Mexico. Good morning, Mark. How are you? How are you? Good morning. Uh, give us a few words about the University of Mexico, uh, New Mexico, and what you do there. Sure. Um, my name is uh, Mark Reynolds, and I am the Associate Director at the University of New Mexico. I've been in communication since uh, 1973. So about 40 plus years of experience in voice, data, infrastructure, security, ITIL, PMI, change management, et cetera, as I oversee a $13 million uh, operational budget. I'm also the current ACUDA president and an RCDD with Vixie Association. So the University of New Mexico is one of the state's largest public institutions as a four-year four degree. And we have 37,000 students. 6,000 staff, 1,000 faculty, and 20,000 employed staff statewide. Uh, we were founded in 1889, uh, so we just, we just uh, finished our 125th year celebration. And with the voice systems, I have about 20,000 phone line ports. I have about uh, 1,000 miles of network fiber, 10,000 miles of copper plant, 55,000 wired connections per day, and 18,000 wireless connections per day. So we're a city within a city and we're an enterprise solution. Well, uh, it's, we would like to uh, have a, a view of, uh, you know, your customer base, you know, what's interesting from our perspective, you know, you, you pretty much have to serve a very uh, dense environment of heavy data and, and mobile users. So can you give us a snapshot of your customer base? So the customer base with, we have, you know, 36,000 students uh, statewide. Um, with the uh, college students that we have here, uh, on the average, bring about 6.97 devices per student. And most of those are smartphones, and they, we do have some tablets, and we do have some laptops. But as uh, capacity and applications become smarter, uh, the students are requiring more capacity, which puts a, a, a huge stress on our wireless connections. So, as I was stating, we have about 18,000 18, wireless connections per day. And uh, with that alone, um, you can imagine what the overhead is, is in order to support. We usually have about 50,000 people that traverse the university campus at one given time. I what guess. we're seeing is that uh, People, because of cellular minutes, that people are starting to, you know, become smarter or already smarter at using the Wi-Fi connection versus paying the minutes for their cellular coverage for data, and even with T-Mobile doing the voice over uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, so we are seeing the trending that we're getting more and more users on the Wi-Fi network on every on a given day. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next question, which is now. Uh, if you can give us an overview of your current network mix between, you know, DAS, Wi-Fi, and cellular. So today we're uh, we're already at doing all of our uh, wireless connections are 802.11a, g, and n, with some already in AC in some of the strategic buildings, like in maybe uh, the upper management buildings. Uh, so we're we're moving as fast as we can. But like any higher education, we rely on the state for funding or we look for a project or we ask the students to assist in that funding in order to get as close to ubiquitous coverage as possible, which is a challenge for higher education. But we turned off B a couple of years ago just because of the challenges with B. But uh, essentially, most of, almost all of our uh, access points are 11A, G, and N with some with AC. And we flipped out. Um, the Cisco product and uh, put in the Aruba. So we're moving very aggressively as we financially can, as well as having the resources to do so. So uh, tell us a little bit more uh, also about the what you call the commodity network, sharing the road. What, what is that? So essentially, <clears throat> the what you look on the, what you're seeing on the drawing is just a very high level approach of essentially saying that everything out there that you can think of we are seeing on our network whether it's secure or unsecure and so the challenge is to take those unsecure devices and quarantine them as well as allow for business continuity by uh, but what the, the, the point here is that 
everything now and the future is going to be IP based. So the network of 10 years ago versus the network of two years from now, uh, you're, not only is the wireless going to be challenged for capacity, so is the backbone. So we're already at um, one gig to every building with 40 gig on the backbone and looking at 100 gig to move to the future. And the point here is just showing that we have a lot of things that are sharing that backbone and that's going to be a challenge for us is again finding the funding and the resources to get our networks to handle that capacity. Uh, well, that's a good transition for my next question, which is, you know, what, what are your current challenges outside of the funding? The more so the as you can see challenges. from the, uh, the the snapshot that staffing, you know, as baby boomers like my age get to a point where we retire, uh, the lack of funding to rehire people is 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 a given, and. Um, so our staff that started out as 15 engineers is down now to six or seven. So uh, trying to keep up with the demands of wireless and the network as it's expected as more people add to the network, uh, that is a challenge. The BYOD or BYOX, what we call it, people bringing devices to the university and uh, expecting them to work just like what you would in any uh, public or private uh, entity they expect the same response. And a lot of times that's what used to draw students to come to higher education is what type of uh, network do you have to provide that student the access they need to do their job. And that is to go to school and, and be able to surf the net and have social media as the way of communicating. The NAC requirements goes back to security because we take it very seriously. Uh, we continue to look at ways of taking those rogue devices or those devices that uh, we don't understand why they're on our network and to quarantine them, but still they may be legitimate, so that takes the resources in order to find out if that's true or not. As the dorms, the students are using more, they're watching more online, uh, and they also, uh, because classes are also web-based, they will go in and look at the classes after the fact or relook at it even if they attend for content. So that puts another strain on the network. Matter of fact, with Netflix, we have a direct connection to Netflix now because we were having so much uh, streaming video that we had to uh, stand that up. The other things is wireless computer labs, all the labs and all of the uh, instructional television and instructional delivery is done over IP. Uh, penetration to the buildings. That's why I said we turned off the B radio because we were having, uh, that was not helping us in the Wi-Fi environment. The classroom coverage, you're competing now with clickers and other type of devices that you have to uh, measure what is more important. And we've actually had professors ask us if we could turn off Wi-Fi and or turn off cellular in their classrooms because it was a distraction. But I think that's uh, the, the, the professors of today, not the baby boomers, are embracing this technology and using what it's you know what it's intended for, and that is uh, to get more participation. Well, uh, let's dive into your roadmap. Um, you know, uh, based on the future university network, uh, how do you envision that? Yeah, uh, we're we're because the old days of just get the network out there, just crank up the speed and let everybody use the network and just be open and free from a university perspective is no longer the case. There, there, are, there are bad people out there attacking universities on an hourly minute basis and so we have to protect our assets. We have millions of dollars worth of assets. We have information that is uh, secure that you can't let out uh, on the internet. Uh, so we're taking a different design approach from the old days and actually going to segregate the university to have the commodity network, which you go back to what I showed before for things that we provide as services, as well as a research network because you have a very high need for high-speed network connectivities for those researchers that need to do grants and stand up a product, but you don't want it to affect your university business. The data center is very key for that security to make sure that everything we do is secure and whoever accesses that data uh, has the right to do that. And then the internet essentially is what we have facing uh, the outside world for the ISPs. 
So again, that's our design of the future, and we're working very aggressively to get there. Excellent. Maybe a final word on the the the, the mix of uh, wireless technologies, uh, you know, the DAS versus uh, control cells and pico cells and so, Wi-Fi. So you know, and Wi-Fi all, how, and how that cellular are really you know the same technologies. The, the thing is, your challenges with cellular and the challenges you have with Wi-Fi with capacity uh, and coverage. So. In the university, you know, with our funding model and trying to find ubiquitous coverage, we have the same challenges with cellular. It's just that we don't own the product. We actually purchase the product from the operators, but we are working with them on seeing how we can build a hybrid solution or uh, stand up small cells or more macros or find an IDAS or some type of solution to give us better penetration for those set operators. And so we are um, aggressively working with the operators to see what we can do to stand up better cellular coverage. But it's a challenge in itself because the operators deal with millions of customers, not just the 36,000 students or staff or faculty we have. We're just, we're just a small cell in their bigger picture of what they maintain. So we're meeting with the operators on an ongoing basis right now to see what we can do to get that better penetration and capacity. And we're doing the same on the Wi-Fi. So putting in 802.11ac, uh, upgrading all of the Cisco to Aruba to uh, AGN. Um, and that's just an ongoing thing that we do every year. We put it in our budget cycles. Uh, we find uh, any project we can put Wi-Fi in. We do it uh, as quick as we can. All right. Uh, I mean, this is this is very useful information, uh, you know, and provides an overview of your ecosystem of users within a very dense environment. Uh, so I want to thank you, uh, Mark, for uh, you know, providing us your insights. I want to thank the audience for listening.